My favorite moment has got to be Carrie Strug landing that vault with a broken foot. I just remember being a kid and watching the Dream Team and seeing Larry Bird play with Magic and Jordan. Just thinking if I got good at basketball, I could have some black friends maybe. My favorite athlete is Michael Phelps because he proves he could smoke weed and still be successful. My favorite Olympic story of all time is Eric the Eel. Eric the Eel was, uh, I don't wait, can you understand me with my accent? I actually have no idea what you're saying. Oh, I thought so. Uh, so maybe we can put subtitles? That's better. Uh, anyway, Eric the Eel was the swimmer from Equatorial Guinea who almost drowned during the race at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. Every four years, the Olympics committee gives out what they call wild card entries to developing countries, just so they can encourage participation in white people's sports. His national body invited people to come, so Eric the Eel turned up and he said, I think I can swim. He was the only one who turned up, and so they went like, okay, cool. You will represent us at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. So basically, this poor guy had to turn himself into an Olympic swimmer within eight months. But now that's where things got interesting because Equatorial Guinea doesn't have so many swimming pools lying around. So long story short, the first time Eric the Eel actually came across an Olympic-sized swimming pool was when he arrived in Sydney right before his first Olympic race. Any other man would have pulled out, would have withdrawn right there and then. But Eric the Eel had come too far to give up so quickly. So he said, you know what, fuck it. Lined up with the other swimmers to see who would qualify for the 100 meter final. In a surprising twist, all his competitors fall started. So they were all disqualified except Eric the Eel. So when the race got restarted, it was Eric the Eel swimming alone in this giant Olympic-sized pool. And heat one of this men's 100 meters freestyle. And here we have Eric Musambani of Equatorial Guinea. He seems like he has the thing down. He goes, reaches the wall, turns now for the next 50 meters. And that's when everything went off the rails. This guy doesn't look as though he's going to make it. His stroke failed him. His legs felt numb. His body could no longer respond. Everyone was afraid that Eric was going to drown in the pool. Now I am convinced this guy is going to have to get hold of the lane rope in a minute. The crowd, which had laughed when he was struggling initially, realized this was a true Olympic moment. This was an underdog that was struggling for his life in the swimming pool right before their very own disbelieving guys. So they turned, cheered him on, and Eric in the swimming pool, almost about to give up, decided, you know what, I can't let everyone down. I can't let my parents, my country down. Adrian, I'm not sure he's going to make it, is he? Oh, he is. This is, this is the Olympics. He's got 17,000 people shouting for him. Eric Musambani of Equatorial Guinea wins heat one of the men's 100 meters freestyle. Well, I thought I'd seen everything in the Olympic swimming pool. So he became the first swimmer to ever win an Olympic race, but with the slowest time in Olympic history. How do you feel? <laughs> Bitch, I'm tired. For me, that's what makes him a true Olympic legend. He made us realize that it's not the winning that matters. It's the non-drowning that matters. Hey there, it's The Daily Show's Trevor Noah. We have our own YouTube channel now, so uh, please do subscribe. Uh, I'll, I'll wait so you can... I won't even look, just because I know that's weird. It's sort of like when a dog's doing its thing. You can just... Yeah, just subscribe. I won't, I won't look.